Welcome to PC Jack. So, quite some time ago, I published a video where I upgraded my CPU cooler to the Be Quiet Pure Loop 2 240mm AIO. While I've used it for the better part of a year, it's actually still one of my most favourite AIOs that I've actually ever used due to its design and overall ease of installation. Now, not long after this came out, Be Quiet then followed it up with the Silent Loop 2, again in size ranges of 120, 240, 280 and 360mm varieties. I've always been interested to take a look and see how it compares to its predecessor, so when Be Quiet reached out and offered to send one out for review, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to test to see which AO has the best performance, the best ease of installation, and even looks. So in today's video, we're going to see how well the Silent Loop 2 and the Pure Loop 2 240mm variants can cool my Ryzen 9 3900 XT, a 12-core and 24-thread CPU. Of course, due to the Be Quiet namesake, we will also be taking a look at noise levels to see which AIO comes out on top, and we'll also take a look at each cooler's lighting implementations to see exactly how they differ. Starting off, let's take a look at the differences between both AIOs and the specs that they both have. So back when the Pure Loop 2 launched, one of the most notable features it had at the time was the fact that it had a double decoupled pump design. Doing so gave the cooler a unique benefit which allowed it to be placed in more unconventional orientations as opposed to using a regular pump in block design. However, many people didn't quite appreciate this design choice and thought the look of it was quite cumbersome. Personally, I didn't really mind it that much, but I can certainly understand the criticism. Even more so due to the pump's fixed speed of 5500 RPM, which is not adjustable. Additionally, due to the positioning of the pump, if it made contact with anything else in the system, like say a fan bracket, then it would create a rattly noise, so you had to be pretty careful in the way that you placed the pump in the case. However, with the release of the Silent Loop 2, Be Quiet have now done away with the double decoupled pump and gone for a more traditional pump design, and this should please a lot of users as it is now adjustable with a speed up to 2800 RPM. However, this choice does make things a little bit more complicated. Due to a long-standing patent that Acetec has on this type of pump, Be Quiet are not actually able to sell this cooler in America. So if you're watching this and you're from the US, then you're probably SOL. But it is still available in other countries though, so not to worry, but I still thought it'd be worth mentioning. Besides the change in the location of the pump, the Silent Loop 2 has a free chamber pump design and a nickel coated cold plate. While the Pure Loop 2 comes with two Pure Wings 2 fans, the Silent Loop 2 comes with two Silent Wings 3 fans. However, I must say, I quite appreciate the fact that Be Quiet have been pretty generous with the amount of cable length on these fans, so you shall have plenty of slack. Now, based on the name, it seems safe to assume that Be Quiet are targeting the Silent Wings 3 at users with a higher demand for low noise, with its advertised noise level of 16.4 dBA, compared to the Pure Wings 2's 19.2 dBA noise level. However, much like the Pure Loop 2, the Silent Loop 2 has the added bonus of being able to refill over time, as Be Quiet do include a little tube of coolant, which you can actually add after a couple of years. Obviously, it's no secret that over time, the coolant from AIOs will evaporate over time, and the actual ability to be able to refill and get even longer out of your cooler is pretty good, and it's a move that I'm really appreciative of, as it's not contributing to the amount of e-waste that AIOs can generate over time. You can simply drain the loop by unscrewing the cap on the radiator, and then refill when necessary. However, some people may see it as a sign that Be Quiet don't have as much faith in the coolant actually lasting as long as other manufacturers. However, with the cooler coming with a 3 year warranty, this is mostly in line with other manufacturers, and the fact that you can get even more longevity out of it by refilling it over time is a huge bonus in my book, provided that the pump does not fail. Additionally, both radiators feature an aluminium design with a nickel coated plating. Besides that, the only key difference between the two coolers is the fact that the Pure Loop 2 has a static white LED design, and the Silent Loop 2 actually has addressable RGB, so you can actually customise it to fit your build exactly how you want. This is controlled either by using an ARGB header on your motherboard to control for your motherboard software, or you can instead use the included ARGB controller. Only one minor gripe though, I do slightly wish that the ARGB cable was a bit longer by maybe an inch or two, because the way I was positioning it in my case did make it a bit of a stretch. However, this could be resolved with an extension cable, but you would have to purchase this separately. I am happy to report though that much like the Pure Loop 2, the Cyan Loop 2's mounting system remains largely the same, and is one of the easiest AIOs I've ever had to install. That's always been my favourite aspect about these coolers, and it's one of the things that has made me prefer these over other manufacturers. The only key difference I would say is the addition of spring-loaded screws, but obviously this would be pretty useful in ensuring that users can't over-tighten this cooler, and it should give you a decent idea of the torque you need in order to screw it down into place. If you're curious on how to install the Silent Loop 2 though, then here's a quick little step-by-step. -step. To install the Silent Loop 2, you'll need four of these spacers, 
four of these screws, two of these mounting brackets, and then for the fans and radiator, eight of these long fan screws, eight of these small radiator screws, and the included Y splitter. Using your motherboard's included backplate, place the four spacers over the protruding threads and then place the long screws in the appropriate AM4 slots on the mounting brackets, and then screw directly into place like so. Next, take your two fans and screw them into the radiator. Please note that you will need to figure out the orientation of your AIO prior to installing it in order to have the fan cables on the appropriate side for better cable management. Next, using the small screws, mount the radiator to your case. Now, place a pea-sized amount of thermal paste on your CPU. Remove the protective sticker from the cold plate and slowly lower it into place. Ensure to screw a few screw turns at a time on each side alternating to ensure even mounting pressure. Plug your fans into the included Y splitter and plug into an available fan header on your motherboard. Plug the pump cable into your CPU header in order to power the pump. And finally, plug the ARGB connector into either your motherboard's ARGB header or instead the included controller. So of course, the most important thing that we have to discuss is whether Be Quiet have improved the performance with their latest AIO. Be Quiet has claimed to have improved the pump design over its predecessor and, with these results, I definitely believe them. Running a multi-core stress test to push our Ryzen 9 3900 XT to around 140 watts on the load shows a slight lead by the Silent Loop 2 with around a 1 degree C reduction over the Pure Loop 2 with our average, while maximum temperatures sat around 73.5 C, a reduction of 4 degrees with the fan set to 50% speed. Kicking things up a little further to maximum fan speeds on both AIOs, we see a pretty consistent improvement yet again in temperatures, but with the Silent Loop 2 taking the lead by a similar margin yet again, but coming out on top of the Pure Loop 2. However, at this point, it's worth taking a look at noise levels between the two. Strangely, the Pure Wings 2 win in this regard. I can't quite explain these results, but both coolers have been tested in the exact same conditions. Maybe due to the different locations in the pump, this could have an effect on the overall sound level, but have a listen for yourselves and see what you think. So now that we've discussed everything that there is about the Silent Loop 2 and its older brother, what can we infer from today's testing? While it's clear that the Silent Loop 2 is a vast improvement over the Pure Loop 2, it's nice to see that Be Quiet are making more of a namesake for themselves in the liquid cooling market, and even more so with its value over its competitors. At 99.95 as of the time of filming, Be Quiet have definitely provided consumers with a worthy option to use in their system. They've offered an exceptional product that offers a more mature and refined look over its predecessor and something less gimmicky than a lot of other manufacturers with their more plasticky and RGB-centric designs. Not saying the Silent Loop 2 isn't RGB-centric as well, but it's a lot less blatant over other brands. I just love the brushed metal look on the cooler. It just adds that extra bit of class that is just like... Mm. My only regret is the looming shadow of Acer Tech on Be Quiet's shoulder, forcing them to limit their distribution of this cooler. But based on Be Quiet's ingenuity, I'm sure that their next generation of AAOs are going to be even more special. And I for one, can't wait to see what they've got up their sleeves. So, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. If you didn't enjoy it, then please feel free to leave a dislike, but please leave a comment to let me know what you didn't like about the video. All kinds of feedback is more than appreciated. Thanks again to Be Quiet for sending out the Silent Loop 2 for me to show you guys. If you'd like more information about this cooler, I'll include a link in the description. If you're after more PC Jack content though, then you can also check me out on Twitch where I live stream every Monday and Thursday. If you miss a stream though, then you can check out my PC Jack VODs channel where I upload all of my archives, including every single episode of Tech Flashback, a live show focusing specifically on the biggest gaming and hardware news stories of the month. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more with myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PC Jack Discord. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, then make sure to check out the PC Jack Patreon where you can claim exclusive benefits while also helping to fund the channel and everything I do for you guys. You can find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.